For months, we tried to get answers from those behind the trials. From Columbia Presbyterian Hospital, where many of the tests were devised. From Incarnation Children's Center, from the Catholic Church. And from the ACS, the authority ultimately responsible. None would comment. The drug companies which have supported trials at Incarnation include some of the world's largest. Among them, Britain's own GlaxoSmithKline. They also refuse to be interviewed for this program, saying only that all trials have stringent standards and are in compliance with local laws and regulations. In Washington, officials at the National Institutes for Health insist that any participation of children in drug trials should be voluntary in every sense. We let parents know that participation is always voluntary, that they can stop participating in a trial at any time. Many parents um, need to have that reinforced, um, that participation is voluntary. We also get the assent of the child when it's appropriate. But what if that child is in the care of New York City authorities, which have volunteered it for trials in the first place? New York law hasn't made clear where the boundaries are between the parent's right to provide and control the treatment for the child and ACS's right. And as a result, the parent loses out and the child loses out because ACS simply says, we're going to make all the decisions. In 2002, the trials at Incarnation were suddenly halted. Attempts to uncover why, exactly, meet either with silence... ...or a call to the NYPD to have us removed. We have every idea. We have every supposedly, idea. Supposedly, they're stating that... Um... During the making of this program, the Food and Drugs Administration announced an investigation into the trials, which we have discovered are continuing at at least six other locations in New York City. <laughs> Meanwhile, Regina Musa from the Bronx is now in contact with her grandson, Garfield. She's won a court order granting her visitation rights. We have to go straight, but this area is what is brown super there. This is her grandson's new foster home in the Bronx. The boy was hungry and Regina had brought food. Although the house was in poor condition, it was better than his previous one, where the foster mother had allegedly beaten him. Garfield's new foster mother receives $6,000 every month for him and three others. What makes her a better guardian in the eyes of the authorities is that she gives the medicine demanded by the ACS, and Regina refuses. I want to get him back. I want to get him back. Because I don't want my child to remain in experimental basis. Not my own grandson. Because we love him. Jacqueline Hoger has had no news of the two little girls she was adopting since that day when the ACS arrived on her doorstep. We weren't given any rights whatsoever. I even wrote a letter to the social worker appealing to her humanity to just let us know something. But I don't know anything. Did you ever say to the nurses or the doctors that you felt the medicine was wrong? I do I try. I just try to be me. <coughs> I don't bother anybody. People do things for, like I said, a reason. 
those good guys, you have to forgive them for what they do.